Hi everyone, welcome to the BioEdge. New Zealand is one of the most puzzling parts of the world in terms of, of an understanding of the biota and um, how it relates to the environment. And we're really um, not that much further ahead now than we were a century ago, despite the accumulation of, of an enormous um, body of facts and interpretation. There's a huge literature on the subject of how the animals and plants of New Zealand uh, reached these islands and, and why there are so, um, so many biases and skews in the composition of the faunas and floras. But overall, the problem seems just as vexed and um, insoluble as it ever has because, firstly, there's so much internal contradiction, and secondly, um, interpreting the, the uh, biology of New Zealand relies on so many assumptions, many of which are, are difficult to, to button down. Kiwi are an obvious example to work on because Kiwi are emblematic of, of New Zealand. And in the past, you know, one of the favorite interpretations has been that, that um, because Kiwi are extremely odd birds, um, that they somehow fill in for the um, glaring lack of terrestrial mammals uh, on this archipelago. But the more you look at this, um, the more this idea seems to break down from various uh, points of view. There, there are essentially two, um, two ideas in, in this interpretation of Kiwi. The first is that it was easier um, for a bird to reach New Zealand than for a mammal to reach New Zealand. And therefore, there was an evolutionary um, incentive, <clears throat> as it were, for, for Kiwi to become mammal-like, to fill in the, the vacant niches. And the second idea is that, in some sense, Kiwi really are um, some of the more mammal-like birds. And, and n neither of these, um, these points is really, that really stands up to scrutiny. Um, in the first place, we now know that there were uh, mammals in New Zealand which have gone extinct because we found um, one item of fossil evidence that incontrovertibly establishes um, the presence of a mammal in New Zealand, which has since gone extinct. And so that whole idea that mammals were not present on New Zealand is now, is now history. Um, and, and secondly, uh, nobody really believes anymore that, um, that Kiwi um, um, rafted uh, onto, onto New Zealand as part of Gondwana. Uh, Kiwi seem to have flown in as, as flying birds and then evolved radically. Now, if Kiwi could evolve radically, from a flying ancestor into the extremely odd form that, that we find them in right now, then why could not, for example, bats or seals have, have evolved into a terrestrial mammal? Because the, the degree of, of um, evolutionary uh, transformation is, is comparable. If we can accept that a, a wren-like bird can become a kiwi, well, we should, should be able to accept that a seal could become you know, a fully um, terrestrial uh, mammal. Uh, and secondly, when you look at the actual mammal-like features of, of kiwi, they're really not that impressive, and they're, they're really um, dependent on, on, on biases of interpretation. Um, in many ways, kiwi are more objectively interpreted as just extremely odd birds. Um, and for every mammal-like feature that kiwi have, there are some real um, divergences from any mammal. And so overall, it's not clear at all that, that uh, kiwi are, are, are um, convergent with mammals. They're certainly extremely odd for birds. So what we're left with is, is question marks on all fronts. Um, did kiwi arrive as flying birds or did they raft? If they rafted or if they were present in the original Gondwana fragment, then a mammal should have been present uh, in the same circumstances such as a, as a monotreme. And so in terms of the, um, of the ability of birds versus mammals to reach this extremely isolated landmass, uh, we're really left groping in the dark. There's no real reason to, um, to believe that um, um, it, was, it was a lot easier for birds to get to New Zealand uh, than mammals. And, and secondly, um, we still don't really understand the niche of kiwi in the sense of being able to weigh it up between a, a bird niche and a mammal niche. And, and so um, it's an extraordinary um, experience as a scientist to, to 
think about an animal like kiwi um, with so many facts and figures at one's disposal and such a clear picture of the um, geological history of New Zealand, which is very strange because there again, you know, it's not clear whether New Zealand is a Gondwana fragment or um, an effective an oceanic island. It's, it's, uh, again, there's shades of grey there. Uh, what's very odd is to have all this information at one's disposal, um, a mountain of data really, and still at the end of it to realise that we just don't know. It's, it's, it's tempting to think that this question is actually um, unknowable. Uh, as scientists, we can't accept that. We have to keep striving for, um, for an answer. We have to keep striving towards an understanding of cause and effect. In, in what has produced the uh, weird fauna and flora of New Zealand and why it's so different from, from other land masses. Um, but the main point I'd like to make here is that um, it, it's very humbling for a scientist to realize that after all this time, uh, we're really back at square one and um, uh, the opportunities for some bright, bright new mind to come in and, and, uh, and think about New Zealand biogeography and ecology um, uh, is just the, the opportunities are just as open now as they ever have been. It's, it's by f uh, far from being a, a you know a, a well trammeled field in which things have been solved and there's nothing new to discover. It's actually an open slate, and um, probably the best thing to do is for someone to come in and just start from scratch, chuck out all the old assumptions, and try and build up a case using an objective um, argument of cause and effect um, to figure out. Uh, why New Zealand has such enormous biases in its biota. Um, it's not just a question of birds versus mammals. Even in the insects, we have extraordinary puzzles, uh, such as, for example, the fact that in Australia in general, that's Australia and New Guinea, there are something like 870 species of dragonflies, whereas in, in New Zealand, uh, we have only about 17 species of dragonflies despite the uh, extraordinary opportunities for dragonflies in a well-watered country full of, of um, lakes, rivers, and streams such as New Zealand. And we know that dragonflies must have been present right from the start, uh, right from the time when um, New Zealand split from Gondwana. And because dragonflies are so extremely um, aerially dispersible, uh, never have been an interruption in, in the... Um, in the arrival of, of dragonflies uh, on these islands. And so even, even for a group like dragonflies, which have always been present in New Zealand and which have always been reaching New Zealand, we still have this extraordinary um, state of affairs in which, uh, although, although dragonflies are present on these islands, the, the, uh, the species list is, is ridiculously um, limited, 17 species versus um, the hundreds that one would predict based on nearby Australia. And so, uh, with these conundrums in mind, um, we encourage everyone to, uh, to start thinking from scratch again about this delicious puzzle of New Zealand. And until next time, uh, we look forward to seeing you here at the BioEdge, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.